What's going on? My name is Michael. Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, go ahead and click subscribe and also like. So in today's video, I want to talk about 3D Touch. So 3D Touch is a technology that is no longer supported on modern iPhones. However, in my opinion, it is one of the best features that we have ever seen on an iPhone, and it has been removed from modern iPhones. The first iPhone Apple removed it from was the iPhone XR, and then with the flagships, they removed it from the iPhone 11 Pro uh, last year in 2019. And obviously, the next iPhones we see aren't gonna have 3D Touch. So in this video, I just want to talk about why I love the feature so much, how it made your iPhone faster in some situations and also how Apple is still keeping the technology around just in a few different forms. So let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, 3D Touch allowed you to press with different levels of pressure in different areas of iOS to get a different menu to pop up. Before with 3D Touch, there were different levels of pressure called peak and pop. And for example, if you were in Safari, you could press and hold with a little bit of pressure and peek into the Apple website and then press with even more pressure to go into this page. But as you can see, my iPhone 11 Pro doesn't have 3D Touch and I cannot do this. So if I wanna go into this page, I have to press and hold and then tap it again. And that's not that big of an issue. However, uh, with my iPhone that had 3D Touch, all I would have to do is lightly press and then press a little bit deeper right here and it would pop me right into apple.com. And you can't do that on an iPhone that has haptic touch. So that's one uh, small downfall there. There also is a, a bit of a speed change with haptic touch. Uh, before with 3D touch, it would know when you're pressing hard and it could pull the menu up super fast. But now because there's no different levels of pressure, your iPhone has to take a little bit of time to figure out what you're doing. And if you keep holding, it'll just take your icons into wiggle mode like that. So because there is not the different levels of pressure, it's harder for your iPhone to gauge what you wanna do, and ergo, it takes longer to do stuff. So I wanted to talk about how Apple has actually kept this technology around in their current products, and they have done that with the iPad. So I actually have the iPhone 6S page loaded up here. And before I show you that, uh, I just wanna show you that this was the highlight feature of the iPhone 6S. And Apple has kinda uh, tried to hide this, but this was the first uh, highlight feature, as you can see on the iPhone 6S page. They were highlighting how you can peek and pop into different stuff, uh, just how awesome this multi-touch, uh, 3D touch technology was. So it's kinda strange that now it's just completely gone, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the speed differences. So this technology is still around when you use an Apple Pencil and you wanna do these shortcuts on your home screen. So I'm gonna do this on the settings app. So take a look at the icon here. I'll make my camera focus on it. So take a look at how long it takes when I use my thumb. You can see it does that little animation and then it, uh, it comes up eventually. But when I push with pressure with the Apple Pencil, it shows up a lot faster. I don't know if I pushed hard enough there. So you can see it comes up a lot faster when I use the pressure on the Apple Pencil. If I don't push hard, I can get it to uh, come up really slow, but if I push hard, I can get it to come up a lot faster. It also works like this in Safari. So if I can get out of this website here, I can open up apple.ca. And as you can see, that is much faster. I can do it really lightly. And as you can see, that animation is a lot slower compared to when I just push in like that and it's a lot faster. So Apple still implements this with the Apple Pencil. However, you cannot do the peak and pop like you could with 3D Touch. If I keep pushing, it doesn't take me into the website. So uh, Apple still incorporates this technology into the Apple Pencil. And another product they have it in is the Apple Watch. Now again, with the Apple Watch, it doesn't have the multiple levels of sensitivity. It only has one. I'll get my camera to focus on it once again. But as you can see, if I push hard on my uh, watch face, I can go and change to different watch faces. So the screen on the Apple Watch is still pressure sensitive. Uh, it's the only Apple product that they sell that has a pressure sensitive display. Okay, so we're gonna do one more test here. I have my iPad Pro and my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, before I do this, wow, the brightness on my iPad is not that good. I have a screen protector on it, but I think the LCD is just not even close to as bright as my iPhone 11 Pro is. You can see the brightness on my iPad is turned all the way up. The brightness on my iPhone uh, isn't even at max. So that's kind of uh, frustrating. It's time for the iPad to get an OLED display. Uh, anyway, uh, back to uh, the, the task at hand. We're gonna go to uh, the Apple website again. I have the Apple Pencil with pressure sensitivity on the left, and I'm just gonna be using my regular old fat index finger on the right here. I'm gonna press and hold on the uh, Apple icon uh, at relatively the same time. So as you can see there, it popped up almost twice as fast on the iPad because it knew that I was pushing with that extra level of sensitivity. 
If I do not press hard on the iPad, I can show you that it's identical speed here. So as you can see, it's about the exact same speed, but when you push with pressure on the iPad, that's when it comes up a lot faster, as you can see there. So that was a brief overview of 3D Touch and Haptic Touch, which is what Apple has replaced it with. Uh, it has changed the UI a little bit and makes it a little bit slower, but uh, I don't know if it's that big of an issue. So tell me in the comments below if you think it was worth it for Apple to get rid of 3D Touch. Uh, some of the benefits were they can make their phones fit more battery now because the screen technology before had to be a lot thicker. And now because they get rid of that pressure sensitive display, they can make their display technology a lot thinner. So the battery life can be extended uh, by significant significantly longer. Uh, when you compare the iPhone XS Max to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, you get an extra five hours of battery life. And the uh, iPhone XS Max had 3D Touch, and this phone doesn't have 3D Touch. So uh, in my opinion, I'm going to take the battery life every day. Uh, tell me though in the comments what you would choose to do. Anyway, that does it for me. Thank you for watching. My name is Michael, and I'll see you in the next video.